Hey, Clutterbugs, welcome back to the Clutterbug podcast. I'm very excited about today's guest because you've heard me talk about her over and over and over again. And she is such an inspiration to me because I genuinely have no idea how she does it all. So I am thrilled to find out the secret to her success. Today, we have Lisa Bass from Farmhouse on Boone. Okay, Lisa, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to come on. This, you are Okay. You are incredible. You are a homesteader. You have a wildly popular podcast and YouTube channel and a blog that's insane. I mean, if you want a sourdough recipe, you are the guru. You are where people go. Mm -hmm. But so much more than that too, making from scratch. Um, Your social media is incredible. And I know from doing this, that's a full-time job in itself, like running social media, doing YouTube videos, doing all that you do is an insane amount of work and you do it exceptionally well. And you are a homesteader and have a butt ton of children. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) What what the deuce? Okay. So here, here's (laughs) what I think. I, I made a sourdough starter, Lisa, and, um, I was making bread from scratch that no, I know you're probably used to it, but I'm going to just tell you the truth. It's a crap ton of work. And (laughs) I think of you often, anytime I'm making a big meal, you make everything from scratch. I think how, how, how are you doing this? And I know, congratulations, you're expecting again. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I guess. Okay. Before you, you jump in and tell us your secret, maybe there's not a secret. Maybe it's hard work. God, I hope it isn't hard work. Um, <laughs> please don't say that. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. So in a lot of ways, I feel like a regular mom. I don't know. Like, I don't feel like I deserve half of the stuff you were just saying. Um, I, so w- before we get into like how that all happens, I, like you said, I have a blog called farmhouseonboon.com and that's where I share recipes. I have my YouTube channel. It really ties together. I share more of like a lifestyle way of showing all of that stuff. So whenever I'm making recipes for the blog, I video it and kind of string it together. And like, uh, this is what I'm baking this week, or this is what I'm, you know, cooking or doing on the homestead. And I have seven children. We are expecting our eighth child this summer. So in like four months. And, uh, yeah, we live on a little homestead. We have like 35 chickens and a couple dairy cows, but not much beyond that. We don't have, like, we're not butchering our own own animals or anything. We'll do gardening this summer. So, um, that's pretty much my life in a nutshell. And then I run a podcast called the simple farmhouse life podcast. Yeah. Which she says it like, this is all nothing. Okay doing a blog and a YouTube channel is a full-time job and a podcast. A podcast is, is adding on top of that, but you, are you milking cows, Lisa? Stop I it. literally just milked a cow. I was like, I have like five more minutes to milk. Cause I have to get on with Cass here. In like 10 minutes. I told before I left the house, I, cause we're an hour earlier and uh, we were out later last night. So I was like, go wake up your sister, have her set up my podcast. I'm going to finish playing the cow. So my daughter knows how to like, like this room isn't dedicated for podcasts. So like it gets set up every time. It's not a big deal. Like we just have like the things that have to come out here and my daughter can do it. But, um, yeah, we milk, we milk cows (laughs) and, and get eggs for chickens. Okay. So I, I mean, that's a whole other amount of work. Plus you have an incredible amount of children if you tell me you're you homeschool, I'm I'm just leaving. Okay, I'm just oh gonna yeah, we go. homeschool. You know that. Oh God, <laughs> like <laughs> how there isn't enough time in the day. That's like I must be not working efficiently because I I don't spend a ton of time on social media or watching TV, and yet there doesn't feel like there's enough hours in the day. And I look to you and I think, but Lisa is doing 20 times more. So are you a 5am person? No, 
Okay. So none of it feels all that intense, but I have a lot of help and I might have more help than you. I'm not sure. I, cause you do so much stuff too, and you do it all very well and you are very strategic. And so I, I would think all the same things about you and maybe you have like more control over all of it because you have more time to dedicate to it. I don't. And so I have a, I have like my podcast. I literally like my podcast managers come up with the questions they come up with the get or not come up with I list the guests, but then they reach out like your podcast manager. Then they take the recording and they make it into, you know, the edited, they add the audio, they upload it. They make the real, like I do nothing except the interview part and like making a list of guests that I want with like a designated topic that I'm hoping to discuss. So like that takes an hour a week because I have to just actually sit down and talk with somebody for an hour a week. And then my blog, um, I test the recipes, but I have two writers and then, you know, there's just like for my social media, I don't even have the Instagram app on my phone right now. She takes and makes reels from my YouTube videos. So Which, I have things very listen, set up. You have, you have, you, you're working smarter, not harder. I have to, I have, you're right. I don't have the time and I really truly don't spend all day on my business. This is a exception of having like this random time because normally it's Monday through Thursday, one to four is like the only time I have because we do homeschool in the morning and then one to four, uh, the little ones are napping. My husband's usually outside with some of the older kids. Some of the older kids have like something they're doing off, you know, whatever they have like a project they're working on. And so I have very set designated times. The rest of the time I am just doing mom stuff. And so none of it really truly does feel that intense, but I just have a lot of stuff set up so that like somebody does my whole entire email list and she does it very well, but I have somebody else working on a course. So, you know, like there's just a lot of people working on it. But the home stuff is a lot too. Your house is always tidy. You make huge meals. I've seen you make homemade waffles in the morning from sourdough scratch. Like this, this is, in, you're, you are goals. You are life goals. And it, even taking away the business out of it, your day obviously is full. You're going to have eight children. You have seven children. You're homeschooling. You're making everything from scratch. You're taking care of animals. You I, In the summer, I've seen your garden. It's gigantic. Do you sleep, Lisa? Yeah, I do. Like I slept today till too late because I was like, hey, I'm just lounging around. And suddenly I'm like, oh, wait, Cass is on 10. She's on Eastern time. I'm on central. We got to go <laughs> sitting there drinking my coffee, but with like the sourdough stuff, it is very hard when you're learning it, but once you know it, it doesn't require you to look at a recipe or to second guess. Am I feeding this enough? Or am I adding the right amount of flour? It really hands on time to make bread is definitely less than 30 minutes probably even way less than that, honestly. So it fits very easily into my day and doesn't feel like something huge because I already know how to do it. Now, if I'm like making a brand new recipe from scratch for my blog, that's something that like, okay, I, I need this to be during my work hours. Cause I have to think I have to like figure all this out, but on regular everyday things, like I'm just throwing in a chicken, you know, in the oven with some potatoes and some bread that does not require any mental effort. And it also doesn't require much time for me to throw it together because it is just so in my daily routine, you know? So I don't think it's as big of a deal when you're used to it, you know? Yeah. Okay. So I think maybe I look at you and I think, oh my gosh, I want to be Lisa tomorrow. Was this a slow steady, like you learn one skill and then you add another skill and you add another skill. You didn't just go out and become a homesteader overnight. What right. was the first thing you really started with? Was it trying to eat more like from nature or did you start with chickens? <laughs> so we here. started with sourcing things. So like I learned to, you know, find local farmers and like actually the first place it started was just cooking stuff from ingredients. Like, okay, I'm going to buy rice, beans, meat, veggies, cheese, just like the ingredients. 
and learn what you're supposed to do with that. And this was starting 15 years ago when I got married and then, you know, figuring out like how you cook each cut of meat and what seasonings you add. And then I started my sourdough starter almost 13 years ago. So I'm just so comfortable with it all that it's really not like when I, again, when I'm learning something brand new or trying something brand new, I have that same sense of overwhelm, but a lot of this, yeah, it's just been built over the years. We lived on a quarter acre for 10 years before we moved here and we had chickens, the garden. So I got good at all of that stuff. And then, so adding on a dairy cow, it literally takes, and I have my husband's help too. So like I was out there milking for like 15 minutes this morning He was feeding and, you know, moving stuff around and doing all the other stuff. So we're talking like an additional 15 minutes of my time this morning. And I don't, I won't really do anything else with the animals today. He will, but I won't. And so I think, yeah, it just has been built so much over time that a lot of it doesn't feel very difficult. It's definitely aspirational and inspirational. You make it look easy, but you are living the life that everyone at their core, I feel like kind of wants. I think I'm too lazy for it. I'm just going to be I bet you're not, but (laughs) just everybody has different, like, you know, there's, there's like a million different ways you can lead like a productive, fulfilling life. And we've been going down this path for a while, like a, the entire time we've been married in one way or the other. It's really, really incredible. I feel very guilty for my Chinese takeout last night. Do you ever get fast food? Lisa? I literally had sushi last night because <laughs> my sister and I, we take our oldest, well, she has six kids and I have uh, seven and we take eight or nine of them in my van. And we go, we take them to something that's like an hour away every Thursday night. And so while we're out, just the two of us and the kids are all dropped off, except for her baby, we do stuff like that. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not above that one bit, especially if I get a chance. We do it like every Thursday night. Okay. That's awesome. So your sister has a big family too. Is it, did you grow up with the homesteading lifestyle? Sort of. So my parents didn't have a homestead, but they've always been farmers. They've always had, you know, cattle, horses, elk. I grew up on an elk farm. So I've always grown up in a rural lifestyle. So I'm very comfortable with that. And like working with large animals, we always had cows and I was in 4-H and I had a steer every year. So yeah, I've grown up around it for sure. I think I think a lot of us don't realize how much time suckers, I call them, we have in our daily life, especially like the modern life. And I did this practice maybe a year ago where I was really trying to identify my time suckers. And so I was writing down literally what I did hour by hour. And it was shocking that I was spending six or seven hours on a screen. You Mm -hmm. don't realize it because it's a little bit here and a little bit there and it kind of adds up and you can go down the TikTok uh, hole and next thing you know, it's been four hours and you're scrolling, scrolling through absolute trash. Um, But I think a lot of people don't realize the time suckers in their life and how much more they could do and how much more productive and happier they could be if at the end of the night when they fall into bed, they look back and think, wow. I did amazing things today. And so you you already are really great at delegating and time management. So I assume you don't have a lot of time suckers in your life. It goes back and forth because you can fit a lot of those time suckers in when you're doing stuff. Like when, so I like go back and forth. Like I don't have the Instagram app on my phone right now, but when I have it, it is just as much a temptation for me as anybody else, like in between my child's math problems, you know, I can, there's a lot of like little moments of downtime that you can fill with that. I, I had TikTok for like a month of my life and decided like never again, never again. (laughs) So like, that's not a temptation for me, but like Instagram and Facebook are for sure. Uh, something where when I have it and my email app, that's another one I have to like constantly delete off my phone. And I'm like, Oh, I need it again. Like, I I don't need it again, but it, I, you know, that's something like, okay, in between math problems or while you're sounding out that word, I'm, I'm looking at my email, I'm, I'm scrolling through Instagram. So there's, you know, there's, there is more downtime throughout my day than you might imagine. Cause like, we're not bringing our kids to school 
there's, I, I, mean, I don't know, there's plenty of times where it's not like crazy here, there, like I get something in the oven and I'm sitting down doing math and my phone's sitting here. So yeah, I'm sure that I have the same. Are you watching things. back-to-back brothers of back-to-back episodes of the property brothers, or are you sitting down and doing that family thing that a lot of families do, which is like the bachelor or watching survivor at night? I, I mean, I'm going to guess no, but I'm curious, are you a big TV person? I, we, I do not have time to watch TV. That's for sure. Like I, when I got home last night late, I, there was a show my husband and I watched last night that I fell asleep halfway through. So I finished that. So like, I'd say I probably average a half a show a day and I enjoy it as much as the next person. It's just, we're, we're off like tonight, my sister and I are taking our kids to another thing. And so I, again, won't get home till like late. And so there just, there isn't enough time. Otherwise, yeah. Like if we were in and the kids were in bed by seven or something, I would, (laughs) because I mean, I don't work on business stuff late at night, but as my kids are getting older, you know, when they were little, sure. We got them in bed really early. And then we could just sit there and watch a show or watch like binge watch shows till we fell asleep at 10 o'clock. But now there's really not time because kids are awake till that time. Kids are awake. Yeah. yeah. It's a whole I different mean, thing. I have teenagers. It is. So. I know. I have teenagers too. So there's no like cuddling on the couch with my husband and watching a movie yeah. at night because even though teenagers are very self-sufficient. Yes, they are. Just, they're just still there. And they, and like, you know, they do need your attention too. And that's like probably the only time for me that they can get it like fully you know, is at night. And so if we're going to take them to do certain things too, like they don't, they, they're homeschooled. So like, if they're going to go to this play that tonight that's being put on by these other homeschoolers in the area, I've got obviously got to take them, you know? (laughs) Yeah, I know. I can't wait till my daughter gets her license. I'm like, will I have some freedom? Will they be (laughs) able to maybe, but I definitely, I, I obviously have more time suckers in my life than you do. I do. I'm, I'm so bad. You are living really a purposeful, intentional, full, beautiful life. And I'm so inspired. And I know a lot of my listeners, this is something we all are striving for. I think because we feel the emptiness in the life that's normalized right now, we feel Mm -hmm. like we're shopping, we're eating, we're, um, yeah, kind of filling this void with mindless television, but it never feels fulfilling at the end of the day. So we just kind of have this little hole inside of us. And I know that I feel that. And I'm not saying homesteading is going to fill that, but I I do think there's some pride when I do bake a great loaf. Mm-hmm, yeah. I feel really good or I make a meal from scratch. You do feel something that I can't quite put my finger on, but it, it feels good. And so for those listening who want to kind of dip their toe in the water or take things to the next level, do you have recommendations of where to start or what they could do to kind of have that more intentional, fulfilled, rich life that you have? You're right. And there, there is good work to be done. And I do feel that my life is set up to where I have a lot of opportunity to do that good work. Like there's just, you know, to put your hand to something that isn't really going to pay you. And maybe nobody's really going to see, I would say just trying to be more intentional about it. It doesn't have to be something that anybody's going to see or that you're not going to get compensated for maybe starting where I started just by starting to learn what to do with very basic foods, like not prepackaged foods and just seeing, you know, how could I make these ingredients into a meal, maybe planting a few things this spring and just seeing how that goes and building on top of it. And maybe you just want to stop there and see that, you know, learn how to bake a loaf of bread, even be sourdough. I started with yeast breads before I did my sourdough starter just to learn what happens when I combine flour, salt, uh, yeast, and water and start just trying your hand at things just to see how it turns out and to, yeah, have that satisfaction of doing 
meaningful work that we've as a culture kind of been like, eh, it's not really worth it. Like why waste our time doing this stuff? Nobody's going to care. It, it really, I mean, I can buy high quality bread with quality ingredients. Let's face it. I can, now that we're all into health stuff, you can get good quality stuff at the grocery store. So sometimes, and you can get good stuff at the farmer's market. It doesn't always necessarily make sense, but it's satisfying. And so that's where I think it does. Yeah, we have a garden and every year I kind of grow new things. It's basically zucchini, cucumbers, and tomatoes. Let's be yeah. honest, because yeah. I don't have the greenest thumb, but nothing tastes better. And I don't know if it's because, I don't know. I assume like part of it's because we grew it, Yeah. but picking a cherry tomato off a vine and popping it in your mouth, you're like, ah, oh, I, I made that. Yep. It's great. <laughs> yeah. And then I have process. too many zucchini. So we yeah. do like all these different things with the zucchini. And I know you can things and you preserve a lot of your foods. Um, so when you're looking at a garden, because now is the time people can start thinking about this, whether you, even if you don't have a big yard, do things in pots, what's a great few starter plants that you can really make meals with, I guess, to, if someone wanted to start a garden, I would say herbs, just putting in at the very least, a nice little herb garden close to your kitchen will make everything taste so much better all summer long. And it's, you can't, you need herbs more constantly. Like you don't stock up on herbs. You want them picked fresh as you're making each meal. And so definitely that. And then, like you said, tomatoes, I mean, if I grew nothing else this summer, I would want to grow herbs, tomatoes, and flowers because it's not summer to me without flowers all over my house and fresh tomatoes and herbs. So yeah. Okay. So what herbs do you use the most? Because I have an herb pot. I have to say, I'm not using it very, I, I suck because I don't know what to put in where. So your top herbs hit me. Thyme, rosemary, basil, love basil all summer long, um, oregano, sage, and don't worry about what goes with what it all tastes good on anything. That's what like, I'm just thinking in my on. brain right now. Yeah. I'm like, well, what goes with what I know nah, rosemary goes with matter. meat or potatoes. It doesn't eh, matter. It totally does. But it also goes on like, I don't know. It's always good. I think, I think you can't really mess it up. And I never know where oregano is like, does it only have to go in pasta? I guess I need a guide. You're saying just sprinkle that crap on everything. Yep. Sprinkle on everything, make an herb butter, just take all of them, chop them up, put them in a, some melted butter, then let the butter come back to solid. Then put that on everything. It's so That's good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> okay. Herb butter. I'm totally doing that. Okay. Love it. Love it. I have a, one more question that I really want to ask you because I did start I call it Mr. Boogs because it kind of looks like a booger. Um, I started as sourdough starter. I'm really proud of it, actually, and it's yeah. going pretty well. <laughs> I don't like the taste of sourdough, Lisa. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so it really does have a very distinct taste. Am I using too much? Do you, Is there something I can add to kind of not? Because I know you make like sourdough pancakes and all of these things. Does everything have that sort of sour taste? Am I just doing it wrong? Um, it, you can definitely ferment things less time. So it depends on what recipe you're doing. I would probably start with a basic, like no need bowl and do a mix of uh, all purpose and just a little bit of whole wheat flour. Cause I do think it takes on a stronger taste, the more whole wheat you use. And then I would just say ferment it less time. If your starter is good and strong, you can get away with that less in the first rise. I mean, it won't have as much of the health benefits, but it definitely still does. And also will make it rise just fine. Um, and then like certain recipes have to ferment a lot longer and they get way more sour. So I think it depends on what recipe you're trying out. And for a beginner, I would say some of those that require a little bit less of the rise time would be probably more tolerable. That's because I'm letting it rise all night long. My first rise because yeah. I live in such a cold area. So yeah, you're right. I think I'm just maybe fermenting it too long. Yeah. You can do less time. You can definitely make it taste a little bit less sour if you don't do that first rise as long. 
You're amazing and you're a wealth of knowledge. And I'm just, I'm so inspired to be more like you. I tell my husband every day that I need chickens. And he said, if you can keep your sourdough alive for a year and oh, okay. continuously bake <laughs> with it, then we'll talk because do you have to get up early and feed the chickens every day? Can you go on vacation? Does someone have to tend to your animals all the time? How much work are backyard chickens? Because I love the idea. I'm not sure I'm going to be great at the execution. So we actually just got back from vacation on Monday. <laughs> we don't do it much, but we take like a week long vacation on average about once a year. And we did go on a vacation and I had my sister take care of the farm. Chickens are so easy. If you have chickens, you need somebody to come by like every other day. If it's really hot summer and your water system could tip, you'd maybe want them more often, but water is their biggest issue. And then you could just give them extra feed because they won't really, they're not like horses where they're going to eat it all and then die. Like they'll, you could just give them extra so chickens are really easy to leave. It's a little harder to leave a dairy cow, but there's ways to make that work too. Um, if you have somebody around, but yeah, we, we do all that too. I feel like because we've just like built on and we've built systems, like it's really not as hard as people think to do a lot of this stuff. I'm going to tell my husband that I'm going to make yeah. him listen to this podcast because I have heard of <laughs> things like we live where it's very cold. And so yeah. he's like, what about in the winter if their water freezes? And I know you can get things that kind of heat the water. Yes, and yes. he's like, you have to let them out of the coop every morning. I'm like, what if we have a pen around the coop? And yeah. Then yeah. You have a run once a day. Yeah, Lisa, I got to do more research, but there's really, I, yeah, chickens are easy. Yeah. And you feed them your scraps. So you're like, you're, oh, yeah. you must have much less waste. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, all, I love that aspect of having chickens. I'm actually thinking about getting a couple pigs for the same reason, because it you're turning your scraps into eggs and meat, you know, like it's, it's so efficient to do that. So mm -hmm. yeah, they, they get everything like the nothing, everything that's a food waste goes into a bowl and they, they eat it all. That's so, that's so cool. And chickens, they seem like, I don't know, just, it's something I want. It's something it's on my dream yeah. board, having a few backyard chickens. I don't like eggs, but you know what? That's what husband's oh. like, you don't even <laughs> like eggs, but you oh, shoot, eggs yeah, <laughs> to, to bake things. So yeah, it's all it in, in the stuff. I'm it's sure. in the five-year plan, Lisa, for yeah. my baby homesteading, my yeah. little, I'm putting a, a toe in the water. Um, right. Okay. Let's talk about your home though. That's the last thing I keep saying the last thing, but one more thing I want to talk <laughs> about your home is always tidy and organized and you have so many children and I guess, yeah. What is your secret there? How do you keep on top of everything and keep everything running like such a well-oiled machine in your home? So I take it a lot of your advice and we keep this place pretty minimal so I really do like decor. So we'll have art and I'll have pillows and it looks decorated, but like, for example, in my boys room, because they're the girls are the oldest. And so they're able to take care of their possessions. And I still have to go through every once in a while and do a mom clean, which is what I call like, okay, are you, I guide them. Are you using this? No. Okay. Do you really want to keep managing this in this room? No. So then I help them like do that. But for the most part, they're self-sufficient. The boys room has Legos, two beds, two quilts, each boys room, a dresser, a desk. It's just, I, we don't have a lot of stuff in there. We have a very minimal wardrobe, minimal toys because they are not capable of managing that. And so to, in order to keep it going, yeah, we just have to do what you teach and keep things very clutter free. It's the only way that I can stay on top of things. And I, I think everybody thinks, well, my kids are going to be bored if they don't have a ton of toys. And I found the opposite yeah. is so true. The more of the toys that I decluttered, the more they actually played with what was left and the more they were creative and the more they wanted to like play with sticks outside. Are you, obviously, I think you're noticing the same thing that more toys doesn't equal more fun for children. Adult. Yeah, I would say the biggest mess I usually have in the boys room, which is the last two days they've done this because it was cold. 
we is like, they'll take the cardboard boxes and scissors upstairs. And then that just obviously requires you to take a trash bag up there. But yeah, they find other things to play. They're not super good with toys, except for Legos. If it's too like, this is exactly how you play this. My kids just don't even play it at all. And then they spend any time it's above 30 and sunny, they spend hours outside. So yes, I agree that having more toys does not mean that they're going to actually play with them at any age for my kids. Yeah. So I guess if you're listening to Lisa, we want to tip the dough in the tip our dough our dip our toe in the purposeful, just full life. We declutter the things that don't matter. And we start focusing time on the things that do, like getting back to nature and growing some tomatoes and some herbs and maybe getting a few chickens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely a sourdough starter. Um I haven't used it in, I, I've, I've let it go two weeks and then fed it and it still came right back. So this yeah, is so something resilient. everybody says like, you need to, oh, it's constant feeding. That no. has not been the case at all for me. This is like a no maintenance. I have a jar of Mr. Boogs in the fridge yes. and sometimes I bring him out. Yeah, I know. People are always like, I don't like sourdough because there's so much waste. I'm like, there isn't. When you first start it, there's discard, but I started mine 13 years ago. So there has been zero waste. We don't, I don't throw out sourdough starter ever. If I, if I need to reduce it down a little bit because I fed it a lot, because I was making something, I'll make pizza crusts or I'll make pancakes. It's, and then if I want to put it in the fridge for three, four weeks, it's totally fine. It always comes right back. It really does. She's telling the truth. Yeah, it really is way less work than I thought. The only thing is the timing. So once you feed it, you kind of got to let it rise and then catch it. So there is a bit of like timing there, especially yeah. we have a cold house. So um, I can't say like, I'm only going to let this sit for eight hours. And then like, we have to kind of go by it. But yeah. I feel like the more practice I have one day, I'm going to be like Lisa and just whipping stuff together at a moment's notice. <laughs> yeah. All and you can always use time. your refrigerator as a good place to pause things. So say your, your starter feels ready and it's like bedtime. Well, you can either pop it in the fridge and then pull it back out the next day, or you can mix up your dough and then allow it to slow rise in the fridge or say your dough was rising an hour before bed, but you wanted it to rise four. Well, then you can put it in the fridge. I'm just always like pulling things in and out of the fridge. Like, oh, it's bedtime. And I guess I started this at the wrong time. And then I put it in the fridge. So I'm like, don't worry too much about the timing. Okay. Just start so and then put it in the fridge. Start it in the fridge, put it in, come it out and still bake it. If it it's... goes into the fridge, super bubbly. And then like, oh no, it's bedtime. I don't want to do this now. What am I going to do? And then you put it in the fridge. It's just pausing that level of yeast activity. That's, that's what I find. I'm constantly just starting stuff. And then if it, if the timing ends up not working out for whatever reason, like, oh, we were actually gone all day and I didn't have time to start something. I thought I was going to start at two in the afternoon. I just use the fridge constantly to my advantage to just, I never like think those people like, okay, well, when would you start that? I'm like, I would just start it whenever I feel like it. And then if it doesn't work out, I'll throw it in the fridge. Okay. This is so helpful. I am going to go feed Mr. Boogs. I'm going to bake <laughs> something today and I'm going to think of Good. you, Lisa. Thank <laughs> you so much. Really. You're so inspiring. You really are on my mind more than once a day. I think of you and I think, <laughs> stop it. Be more like Lisa. That's just, and I say it to my whole family. They've never met you, but <laughs> everyone knows who you are. Cause I'm like, we got to be more like Lisa. Cause it feels good <laughs> at the end of the day. That's what it's all about. It feels good. And I feel proud of myself when I do these little things to just be more intentional. Yeah. Yeah. With my home and, and with all the ways I'm kind of living in my house. So thank you so much for being on the podcast. I know everybody listening is going to feel inspired to, to do something small today and and turn off the screen for a little bit and bake something from scratch <laughs> please let all my listeners know how they can find you okay so if you like podcasts which you obviously do you can find me at simple farmhouse life podcast other than that farmhouse on boone.com and farmhouse on boone on youtube are the best places to find me so thank and you your so much podcast for having is me. 
awesome. So please <laughs> head you. over to that podcast. I'm going to put a link to her podcast and all of uh, Lisa's socials in the description of this. And thank you guys so much for listening. We'll see you next time.